Okay, so we've talked before about using um, IK constraints with legs. And I think we had a question once about, well, why don't you use it um, with the arms? Now, there's some situations where you would want to use um, IK constraints with an arm. And I'll show you uh, one of the reason, uh, one of the ways that you can use it. So um, in this case, I've got this character who's holding on to the crayon. And it's really nice to have my arms just attached to uh, this crayon here. So using the IK constraint um, with this actually gives me something that I can target and, um, and move around. The other benefit to this is that I can actually get um, perspective warp on this crayon by just using the scale on the... Um, the bone there now you can see like at the end here it's kind of getting a little wonky because the the ellipse would need to bend the opposite way right now um but you can add uh keys for all that so let me show you how i set all this up let me just get rid of that get rid of that uh we need to say goodbye to these groups okay so we've got normal arms um just hanging out now in our um, crayon is just uh, floating. Um, so the first thing I'm going to try to do is just add IK constraints to the um, arm chains here. And then I'm going to target the uh, bone. So we're going to start with that. So if I target the bone, um, you can see that it snaps to the bone because the way that IK constraint works is that it lines up the end point of our uh, constraint or our bone chain. So right here, it's going to line it up with the target. So if I do this one, oh no, it's back here on the end. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like uh, Lion King, you know, now he's like, ah, <laughs> all right, so that's not what we want. What we want is, um, to have the character have his arms spread out and grab different parts of uh, the crayon. So uh, to do that, we can add in a couple groups here and we're just gonna use these groups as targets. I probably don't even need to set them to target, but um, I'm going to for now. Uh, and then let's get those position right. So let's say he's grabbing that one there and this one here, and then we'll just go in and assign those groups again. Boop, and boop, oh, nope, wait, bone count, messed up here, there we go. Okay, so I can't click, there we go, oops, I did it again, here we go, we got this, let's just really get in on that target there. I believe in you. I, okay, mm -hmm. oh, now I know why it's busted, so we also need to put those, those uh, groups uh, nested under the bone so that when I move the bone, it moves the groups. Yeah. And now my crayon is in my hands and I can do all kinds of, um, do all kinds of stuff with it. And you can see, I think I set the animation up in here. This is, I, I just kind of threw this little goofy one together this morning. It's kind of hopping around. Um, so you can see that the perspective is pretty decent. Um, but again, the, the crayons flattening. So I could just go in here, um, because everything is sort of independent of each other, I can just go in there, do the scale like this, and then let's find where the crayon goes the opposite way. I think that's like the maximum opposite way. Just crank that scale down like so. And then where are my keys at? Here, take that, stick it on the end. And boom, now the uh, the perspective is flipped, and this this whole animation just, I don't know, it took a couple minutes. I it, I would never want my character to run like this, but, um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to uh, get something up and running um, with this kind of setup, so.